bandits abduct widows 24 hours after husband's death in Buhari's home state. The widow of Alaji Rabe Bello Kufa, former head of Kufa village in the Kosada local government area of Kasina state, have been abducted by gunmen suspected to be bandits barely 24 hours after his death. Sahara reporters gathered that Kufa died on Tuesday, August 24th. It was learned that the gunmen stormed the deceased house on Wednesday morning and abducted some members of his family, including his widow. Kasena, despite being the home state of President Muhammad Buhari, has witnessed sporadic attacks by bandits and kidnappers that have claimed the lives of many. Over 1,000 people have been reportedly killed by the gunmen in Jibia, Kankara, Dutsinma, Musawa, Danmusa, and Safana local government areas of the state in the last five months. On December 11th, some bandits kidnapped 344 students of government secondary school, Kankara. They were released about a week later. Also on December 19th, 84 Islamia students of Isburahim Islamaya in Mahuta village, Dandume local government area of the state, were abducted but rescued shortly after. Recently, some members of the House of Assembly lawmakers shed tears for the Buhari led government uh, at a plenary while discussing the deterioration of insecurity under the present regime okay um i mean this is now what we are realizing what we can observe is that of course before it was just you know the normal you know citizens the basic ones that didn't really have any title to their names not that that's irrelevant but those ones were the consistent um ad abductions but right now it seems like these bandits are getting confident and they are going up the ranks now this is not um because this kind of news, yes, it would be, say, bandits abduct widows 24 hours after husband's death. But then they didn't really, they didn't really, like, show or describe the importance of this man until in the article where it says he was the former head of Kofa village. So he was a head. So in that, in that area, he's known. Um, and recently in the NDA, um, a lot of... You know, the, the place was attacked and bandits actually took, um, abdu uh, abducted a major that we know of and another one as well as, you know, injuring others who are receiving treatment. But what we know now is, okay, fine. There is definitely like relevance to the names and the ranks of people that are being abducted. And it seems like it's going to continue. So obviously with, you know, with, with you know, the normal citizens getting kidnapped, that is you know, continuing. But now they're adding on to that relevant people in society. And it may just be they continue like that. And, you know, the ones who are stakeholders and community may also start suffering the way the normal citizens are suffering. Uh, someone says Mr. Buhari or Mr. President, Please put aside everything and put things in order. Nigeria is finished. A friend of mine who is a lawyer said this morning spoke about the state we have found ourselves in. I couldn't say much because of what I read every day online. Buhari should resign or start working. If we continue this way, it will be difficult to repair this damage when another government takes over. Yeah, but then it's like, when it comes to damage and actually taking care of damage, that does not even add to the equation because when Buhari came in, there was damage from the previous administration. But then what Buhari did was to compound and add to it. And that is how it has been with even previous administrations in Nigeria. So this whole thing of damage, it's fine. It's like it's like a it's like a conventional thing. Fine, you you do what you can with administration, it's never really finished work. So they transfer it. So wherever the new administration meets there would of course be from the previous administration. So they'd have to solve and deal with it um and it's like you're in government now so you, whatever you meet there you do so you know this you know it also ties into the arguments of you know um saying that actually 
because again a lot of people from apc well supporters were saying that this old issue of um what was it of the chibok girls obviously also also ties into insecurity and banditry that is happening right now but then there have been you no know, statements that say it started in um gulag jonathan's era so that is his fault and it's like why would you even think like that in the first place so whatever damages that is that is caused here of course the next administration is going to have to face it because the country is not really made perfect is it um so yeah that that doesn't really go but nigeria is actually you know it's actually finished um it it would take very much intentional an intentional intervention i don't know what's going to happen but um i think for a lot of nigerians right now a reality check a huge reality check a really intense one has you know has hit them because of what is happening in um, afghanistan not that we are in the same similar situation but the steps that we're going draw parallels to where they are now we are just only a few decades back in time but you can actually say that you know what that should be a good sign and a, a, a kickstart to actually trying to make change but i don't think anyone is trying to somebody else says you guys have never seen anything um and the person puts a picture of a, of you know someone hitting somebody and the person hitting the bandit and the victim northern as that's how it's labeled in the picture and the comment is you have never seen anything yet and it's just like it just begs the question what is the north doing because it seems like with everything that is going on um it's like they purposely just let themselves be violated and don't do anything about it like is it that they enjoy such or is it that they just don't care anymore they really have no control what is the mindset like because i struggle to understand listen they have they have suffered the most when it comes to bandage and insecurity if there's any demography in Nigeria that has gone through the worst, it is them. So the question is, you'd expect that they be the most frustrated, be the most angry, and be the most critical of the government because of what they're going through. But it's silence. If we don't hear anything from them, they get violated every single day. And because they do not react, because they let it go on, these things get intensified. And with every news you hear, it's always one step above. It's always one step, this happened and this happened. And it, it gets more intense. And it's just like, why? Very sad. Um, and it forces other people of other regions to sort of... I, maybe it's just the way I think. But it, it, or how do people from other regions of Nigeria now sleek, look at them and see them? Because you're one country at the end of the day. So what is happening in the north? It's going to rub off on the south in terms of... Um, the trauma and like it's nigeria so again bad news spread faster than good news so of course that would be the official branding of nigeria what is happening in the north and it is the official branding of what, of what nigeria is the north which obviously is not everything about nigeria so yeah um it's it's uh it's it's a weird it's a weird so i don't know what's going on in the north they need to step up probably i think and do not forget like and subscribe